another episode of Federico Talks Watches. It's been exactly one month since my last Q&A video. That is where you guys go to my Instagram, that's at Federico Talks Watches, and you ask me questions and I try and reply to a bunch of them on a video. I do it once a month, so thank you to everybody for participating. Now before we get started, a couple little announcements. The first one is... Um, content might be a little slow for the next week. Um, you know, I am taking a short little break. I am going to New York uh, tomorrow to visit some family and just hang out a little bit, celebrate my uh, my birthday, and of course, maybe go take a look at some uh, watches. A lot of my fellow dealers are in New York, so I'm going to go take a look at what they have as well. And on top of that, I also want to let you guys know I got a ton of new stock at DelrayWatch.com. A new Seamaster Ceramic, IWC Perpetual Calendar Portuguese, a Pre-Ceramic No-Date Rolex Submariner, a Jaeger Master Ultra Thin, a Roger Dubuis Limited Edition Watch, and a bunch more. That's at Delray Watch Supply, DelrayWatch.com. Go check it out. Link in the description below. And we do more than just sell watches. We also repair watches if your watch needs service. And we buy watches if you have a watch you'd like to sell. So go check it out. My uh, Your support, not my support, your support really means a lot to me. And right before we get to the questions, what am I wearing today? I'm wearing the IWC Vintage Collection Engineer. I put it back on the Navy strap for the past three years it was on um, the Santoni Brown strap, but now it's back in the Navy. And uh, I'm loving this. I am really loving this. Will it make the cut of watches I bring with me to New York on my trip? I don't know. But watch next video to find out. And also, guys, if you see me staring over here, I'm just reading off the questions from the guys that asked it on Instagram. I'm not being rude. I'm not ignoring you. Just, you know, got to read the questions. So the first question is from E. Muckridge. Preferences on Speedmaster Manual versus Coaxial. Let me start off by saying the Coaxial Speedmasters are awesome. New in-house movements, automatic, of course, Coaxial Escapement. What's not to love? Apart from the price. The price is kind of high on those. But for me, the Speedy will perpetually be a manual wind. Uh, that lamagna based manual wind 1861 movement, and of course the 861 or the 321 if you get vintage variations. That's kind of the iconic speedy. Is the coaxial a good watch? Sure it is, but it's way more expensive, nowhere near as iconic, and drops value like a brick. So for me, manual wind all the way. Ty Ty J. Tyler, how you doing, man? I, rec I recognize your screen name. Hey, Fed, as always, hope you're doing well. Well, thank you so much. I bought a vintage Rolex Oyster from the 40s. Awesome, buddy. Once I get it serviced, what can I expect in terms of durability and water resistance? Well, Tyler, I mean, it's a Rolex, so it's built to be water resistant and durable. But don't forget, man, this watch is like almost 80 years old at this point. So, me, the first thing I do is I would keep it as far away from water as possible. Even though it might pass a water resistance test, you just never know. Vintage and water do not mix. As far as durability, well, listen, it's a workhorse movement. It should uh, fare very well as an everyday watch. Would I work construction with it on? No. Is it as tough as a modern day Rolex? No. But you should have no problem wearing it every day. But water and vintage, man, never a good idea. Trust me on that one. You're going to thank me later. Justin Hill 87 What's the better value? The Rolex Milgauss White Dial or the Rolex Air King, the new 40mm model? Well, Justin, I'm really biased. I love the White Dial Milgauss. It is by far one of my favorite Rolexes ever made. And they were seriously underappreciated. They could be picked up in the fours previously. However, now that they're discontinued, prices, and I've been noticing, because you know I sell these things, are really climbing up rather quickly. What used to be mid-fours is now mid-fives, and sometimes even without box and papers. 
you know, the Air King, yeah, it was hot because it just came out, but it's quickly back to its place as the Ugly Duckling in the Rolex lineup. No offense to anybody that owns it. I actually quite like it, but it certainly isn't as popular as the rest of it. So you can pick up a previously unloved white dial Milgauss that is now discontinued and climbing in price. I think that's the better value. And I see those climbing in price way faster than um, the Air King. So yeah, white dial Milgauss all the way for me on that one. Randall Peabody. Who do you want to win the Champions League? Well, my team got kicked out in a ball of flames, Forza Napoli. But I just witnessed Roma spank Barcelona. So for me, even though I'm not a big Roma fan, well, I'm not a Roma fan at all, gotta be a Patriot, Forza Roma, let's go Italian teams, any team but Juventus. JTHO8774, how do you get involved in watches initially? Gotta be honest, man. Um, I didn't get involved as a job in watches because I liked watches. I actually started with a job in watches that made me fall in love with watches. Um, I just kind of was looking for a part-time job, and I walked into Cartier Fifth Avenue one day. Didn't know anything about watches at all, almost. I mean, my brother was kind of into them, but didn't really know anything about watches. Met the manager, shook his hand, he liked me. And he offered me a job, and from that movement, f and from that moment forward, I made it my job to be the best damn watch salesman I could be. And I spent eight hours at work and eight hours at home reading TimeZone.com. Uh, back then, that was like the only forum that mattered, and that is uh, pretty much how I got involved with watches. Just eight four one. Who are your favorite, or who do you think is the best independent watchmaker? Well, I think the best. At least the con general consensus is probably Philippe Dufour um, is the best. But my personal favorites are F.P. Journe and Carrie Voodoo And not only are their pieces actually attainable, um, but aesthetically they are fantastic. Um, Journe particularly is my number one favorite. Devo Watches. What do you think of the Hoopla Big Bang smartwatch uh, that will be worn by referees? For real, um, I hope it burns in hell. I'm not a huge fan of Hublo smart watches. Not a huge fan of smart watches in general. The price of this uh, completely ridiculous. Of course, though, Hublo making a great marketing play, wearing it during the World Cup. What can we say? Smart job. Anyway, guys, that was my uh, Q and day for this month. If you guys want to participate. Go follow at Federico Talks Watchers on Instagram and you can answer or ask questions there when I put up the Q&A picture once a month. And of course, please like this video if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And of course, check out Delray Watch Supply. Guys, thank you so much for sticking with me for another episode of Federico Talks Watchers. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Take care.